Good morning everyone, my name is Haim Hanna and today my presentation is about shear strengthening of reinforced concrete CBs using carbon fiber reinforced polymer anchored with CFRP spikes. The co-authors of the study are Professor Jamal Abdullah, myself, Professor Rami Hawile, and Sharafi al Marzugi, Tineji, and al Ali. This is the outline of my presentation. First, I will introduce the topic, then I will talk about the research significance, followed by the experimental program, then I will discuss the experimental results, and finally, I will conclude the presentation. The use of fiber reinforced polymers to strengthen existing reinforced concrete structures has eliminated many of the current infrastructure problems. This is due to its favorable properties such as high corrosion resistance, high strength, light weight, rapid installation time, lower life cycle cost, durability, and sustainability. Such characteristics are vital to maintain the integrity of structures such as bridges and buildings. Introducing FRP in beams and columns is an effective way to enhance the RC beams uh, in shear, flexure, and axial. Shear strengthening using FRP materials is crucial in many critical applications due to the severity of shear failures. In fact, shear failures are sudden and brittle with no signs exhibited prior failure. Shear strengthening using FRP can be accomplished by bonding the FRP sheets to the concrete either in the form of complete wraps, U-wraps, or side bonded. Completely wrapping the FRP around the beams is ideal strengthening method as it provides confinement as well as shear enhancement. In addition, the complete wrap develops the tensile capacity of the FRP. However, this method could be difficult to be implemented in many cases due to geometrical hindrance, such as in cases where the beams are attached to the slabs. As a result, placing the FRPs in the form of U-wraps is the most commonly used method. The efficiency of the U-wraps is often limited by the insufficient development length and consequently the interfacial bond stress between the FRP and concrete. The side-bonded scheme is really being used nowadays due to its ineffectiveness compared to other methods. The primary ferial mode of the FRP strengthened beams is the premature debonding of the FRP laminates from the concrete substrate at low FRP strain levels without developing the tensile strength of the FRP material. To address this issue, research has shown that anchoring the U-wraps by means of adequately designed anchorage systems could delay or prevent debonding and develop the tensile capacity of the FRP. Different types of anchors have resulted in different degrees of improvement in the FRP to concrete bond strength, out of which FRP spike anchors have demonstrated the ability to achieve the tensile capacity of FRP material. Other advantages of FRP spike anchors include compatibility with the FRP laminates, as it is made of the same material, and it can be used for a wide variety of structural applications such as beam to column joints. There are several parameters that would affect the efficiency of the FRP spike anchors. These include the embedment depth, the dowel diameter, the insertion angle, beta here, the fan angle, alpha angle, the anchor to material ratio, and the fan length. The effect of these parameters on the capacity of the anchors has been addressed in several research studies. Moving on to the research significance. Despite the numerous research studies on the pullout capacity of isolated FRP anchors, the literature lacks comprehensive analysis on the effect of varying FRP spike anchor parameters on the shear capacity of RC beams. In addition, most of the current design provisions emphasize the importance of anchorage for FRP shear strengthening applications, but do not include guidelines to design the anchors. Therefore, this research aims at studying the effect of the embedment depth, dowel diameter, inclination angle on the shear capacity of CFRP u wrap beams. For the experimental program, in this study, six reinforced concrete T-beams with dimensions of 2 meter in length, 150 mm width, and 300 mm in height were tested. The tension zone was reinforced with three number 16 bars located at 259 mm from the top of the beam, and the compression zone was reinforced with six number 8 bars distributed in the flange as shown in this figure. One half of the beam was heavily reinforced in shear uh, with number 8 stirrup spades at 80 mm center to center to prevent shear failure at the non-tested span, and the other half did not include any internal shear reinforcement to investigate the effect of external strengthening using CFRP wraps and spike anchors. All specimens in this study were strengthened at the soffit with two layers of 150 mm wide CFRP laminate that spanned across the beam length to prevent flexural failure. Five specimens were strengthened with uh, U-wraps that were 100 mm in width and had a 150 mm center-to-center -center spacing, as you can see. 
four of these specimens were strengthened with the U-wraps, were anchored with FRP spike anchors. All anchors had a fan length of 100 mm and corresponding fanning angle of 30 degrees. In addition, all anchors were drilled at the center of the U-wraps, as you can see here, on both sides of the U-wraps. The variables tested in the study were the embedment depth, ED, the dowel diameter, DD, and the insertion angle, IA. The test matrix is composed of a control unstrengthened beam, which is BC, a U-wrapped beam, BU, and beams that were anchored uh, with anchored U-wraps, the ones that start with BAU. The numbers following the letters in the designation refer to the dimensions of the anchor. For example, uh, for beam uh, BAU751045, the beam has 75 mm embedment depth, 10 mm diameter, and 45 degree insertion angle. And you can see here the uh, different parameters tested in this study. Moving on to the material properties. The compressive strength of concrete was obtained by testing three concrete cylinders during the testing week. The average obtained compressive strength was 45 megapascal. In addition, three steel bars were tested under tensile tests to obtain the mechanical properties of the 16 mm diameter bars. The average yield strength and elastic modulus were found to be 590 megapascal and 200 gigapascal, respectively. The CFRPU wraps and anchors were fabricated from the same material. Uh, the sheets and anchors were bored into the concrete substrate using the uh, epoxy adhesive. And here you can see the laminate uh, properties of the CFRP and uh, the mechanical properties of the epoxy adhesive. As for the test setup, the specimens were tested under three-point bending tests in a universal testing machine at a displacement controlled rate of one millimeter per minute. The load was applied mid-span of the beam, as you can see in this figure. The shear span and overhang length were 850 millimeter and 150 millimeter. To monitor the strain in the U-wrap, one strain gauge was placed on each side of the U-wrap at the locations shown in this figure. The values recorded herein are the average values of the two strain gauges on each U-wrap. In addition, the strain in the concrete was monitored by mounting a strain gauge in the mid-span of the beam at the top of the flange. Also, the mid-span deflection was measured by placing a linear differential variable transducer, LVDT, mid-span at the bottom of the beams. Moving on to the results and discussion, and starting with the failure modes. As you can see here, the failure mode of the unstrengthened specimen BC was initiated by the formation of the uh, critical shear crack that extended from the support in the web to the loading point in the flange. The failure of the strengthened specimens BU, which is unanchored, and BAU, which were the anchored specimens, uh, was initiated by the formation of the critical shear crack. However, as the load increased, the cracks widened and caused debonding of the middle U-wraps, as in the specimen BU, or debonding of the U-wraps with the anchors, as in specimens BAU. The presence of the anchors caused the U-wraps not to fully debond from the concrete substrates, but instead, partial debonding of the U-wraps and anchors was observed. Also, you can see here the summary of the test results. Measured values of the uh, maximum ultimate load, P sub U, deflection at ultimate load, corresponding total shear strength, V sub N, is, is uh, shown here in the table. In addition, as you see, as you know, that the uh, beams did not uh, have internal shear reinforcement in the um, tested uh, shear span. Therefore, the V sub N of specimen BC is considered the shear contribution of concrete for all the tested beams. And as a result, the FRP contribution to shear capacity was calculated by uh, subtracting um, V sub C from V sub N of each specimen. Also on the table, there is a percentage increase with respect to BU in V sub N and V sub F, and there is the maximum uh, strain attained uh, at, uh, at ultimate load uh, uh, in the U wraps, and here is also a summary of the failure modes. The shear force deflection curves of all the tested specimens. 
As you can see here, uh, the results indicated that all strengthened beams shows an enhanced shear capacity and deformation capacity than specimen BC, which was unstrengthened. In addition, uh, the gain in the shear capacity was uh, from 45 to 70 percent in all strengthened beams uh, compared to the unstrengthened beam. The uh, benefit of anchorage was pronounced in the enhancements of the shear capacity of the anchored beam compared to the URAPs, particularly the shear capacity and FRP contribution to shear capacity of BAU specimens improved by 8 to 17 percent and 27 to 55 percent compared to BU, respectively. In addition, the maximum shear force of the anchored specimens occurred at higher deflection than the unanchored specimen. Also, a slight enhancement in the effective strain in the CFRP wraps was depicted in the anchored specimens. Overall, test results show that anchoring the CFRP wraps enhances the shear capacity, deformability, and CFRP strain utilization. These bar graphs show the percentage increase in the FRP contribution to shear capacity for the anchor parameters tested. Starting with the embedment depth, it can be clearly indicated that uh, the embedment depth has a significant effect on the capacity of the anchors. This can be shown by the uh, significant enhancement in the shear capacity of the 75 mm anchors as compared to the 50 mm, and this is due to the enhanced pull-out capacity of the anchors. As for the double diameter, the result Results indicated that increasing the diameter from 10 to 12 mm did not affect the shear capacity when all other parameters were kept constant. Well, this could be attributed to the anchor hole diameter to embedment depth ratio, where studies have shown that increasing this ratio reduces the capacity of the spike anchors. Test results also show that the insertion angle did not have a significant effect on the capacity of the anchors. Well, theoretically, due to the high bend of the 90 degrees, the, um, the, the 90 degree anchors should have significantly lower um, shear capacity than the 45 degree anchors. However, the study could be limited, uh, the anchors in the study could be limited by the choice of the embedment depth or double diameter. And therefore, based on the experimental results, it is recommended to increase the embedment depth of the anchors up to 75 mm. In addition, it is advisable to use straight anchors instead of bent anchors to maximize the tensile capacity of the anchors. Conclusion Strengthening of RCT beams with CFRP wraps enhance the shear capacity of the beam by 45%. Anchoring the U jackets further improved the FRP contribution to shear capacity by uh, 27 to 55% compared to the unanchored U wraps. Increasing the embedment depth from 50 to 75 mm enhanced the CFRP contribution to shear capacity by 19%. In addition, increasing the double diameter from 10 to 12 mm did not affect the capacity of the anchors. Similarly, reducing the insertion angle from 90 to 45 resulted in the same shear capacity. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask.